by thanking Michelle for inviting me here tonight to, to tell my story. Um, I'm generally not like as comfortable up on a stage as my wife Jess is. Uh, you guys have probably seen her speak at some point in time. Um, she does it quite often. It's it's really impressive. Uh, so uh, I also want to thank Michelle that you know I only have about 15 minutes to fill here. It definitely makes my job a little bit easier. Um, you know I'm not I'm not very active on Twitter, uh, and I've never written a Medium post. And the last time I spoke to like Jesus this many people um, was a little over six years ago. Uh, so a lot of you, I would not blame you if you were sitting there going like, who the fuck is this guy? Um, that's kind of a rude question, but uh, since you asked, I'm Ross Mashmeyer. Uh, really nice to meet you guys. Um, so I manage design at Facebook for their two most OG products, Search and Profile. They're really just the connective tissue at the center of everything that Facebook does. Um, and I'm often so focused on helping my teams move these products forward that I, you know, I, I neglect and I forget to take a step back and kind of like look at how crazy it is uh, that my path led here. Um, I graduated college in 2005 with a fine art degree from NYU. This is a photo of me covered in peanut butter and bird seed. My folks were V proud. Um, after graduating, you know, four years, lots of money, NYU is not cheap, uh, I decided fine art actually seemed like too stable a career path, uh, so I decided to become a professional musician instead, just as it was collapsing in on itself, uh, the, the music industry. While, and, and, you know, while being in an indie rock band uh, provided uh, almost no income, uh, it did provide a lot of opportunity to explore graphic and web design. Um, you know, the two first things you need as a band is an album cover and a website. Um, and in fact, over time, I found I was spending much more time up late at night uh, designing things for the band, whether it was t-shirts or posters or websites, uh, than I was actually uh, spending time practicing music. Um, and to make money, you know, in, in real life, uh, during the day, uh, I drifted back and forth between ad agencies and freelance doing things like banner ads and, and microsites when that was still a thing, uh, and, uh, and other small websites and small brands. Um, but you know, after, after a couple of years of this, it became clear that really neither the band uh, nor my design job was really getting me anywhere as a career. Um, uh, while, my, you know, while design was clearly my strongest passion, I hadn't yet really connected with the design community anyway. I was sort of like a lone wolf, just sort of like picking it up as I went along. Um, and uh, and, and, and you know, my focus was on really trying to make the band successful still at this point. Um, and then in 2008, you know, I met my wife Jessica, um, and everything changed. Um, hi, Jessica. Uh, I've edited this presentation with her beforehand, so she knows it's all glowing. Um, so you know, not only had I had I met the person you know that I knew I wanted to spend the rest of my life with, she also managed to inadvertently. Uh, introduced me to uh, interaction and product design, uh, the, the career that I always wanted but never actually knew existed. She had heard through the grapevine about this uh, new MFA program in interaction design that was starting up the School of Visual Arts. Uh, I read the course list, which uh, included classes on things like physical computing, strategic innovation, research methods, entrepreneurial design, cybernetics, which just sounded like the future. Um, and, and it really reawakened you know, my eight-year-old self, who had kind of always dreamed of becoming an inventor. So, uh, you know, so I dashed off an application, uh, and you know, a few months later I was enrolled. Uh, and it was everything that I had hoped for and more. I spent two years there. I connected with a design community. I learned skills that would enable me to prototype and build you know, almost anything I could think of. I got an internship at Apple, where, uh, where I was actually awarded my uh, first patent. Oh, thank you for remembering that. Um, and, uh, and actually thus becoming you know, officially an inventor. Uh, the one really cool thing is, you know, my, my thesis project, which was uh, actually a connect hack, like just as connect hacks were starting to happen uh, before they stopped happening entirely, uh, uh, was, was this sort of gestural instrument that allowed you to, to control sequence music in, in real time. Um, it even ended up on the, on the cover of the New York Times uh, technology uh, section, which was uh, really, really cool. Uh, and in my last semester, you know, I got an email from Facebook. I was down at South by Southwest, got this email. They had a recruiter down there at South by Southwest. I met with him. He seemed OK. They invited me for an interview. I was like, cool, I'll do that. Uh, and so I flew in for an interview the day after I proposed to Jess. 
Uh, and so I guess I brought some good energy with me because you know they offered me a job, and I dragged Jess kicking and screaming out west to San Francisco. Uh, and I started work in 2011. Um, you know, I think if, if Jess had really known that like introducing me to this MFA program in interaction design would lead to her expatriation from Brooklyn, I'm almost positive she would have never brought it up. Uh, but there I was. I was the 27th designer at Facebook. Now we're closer to something like 400. Um, and back then we all sat together. These were these were our desks. These are some amazing, uh, you know, past and present coworkers of mine. There I am. There's the back of my head. Uh, hi, me. Um, uh, and, and in those first six months, just my first six months, I shipped two redesigns uh, of groups across web and mobile um, and designed the college groups that we call communities that are actually uh, still helping college kids organize their academics and their social lives uh, at college campuses all around the world. Um, and I'm really proud of these big things in my first six months, but I'm, I'm actually really proud of two really small design touches for my time working on, on Facebook groups. Uh, the first is, you know, if you haven't uploaded a cover image to your group, that, that big photo at the top, will actually display a collage of, uh, of the group members up top. Uh, it was a simple little idea that I came up with. We just had like a gray box there before, uh, and I called it the group hug, which everyone seemed to like. Um, and I was in a meeting the other day, like five years later, where an engineer actually referenced the group hug. Uh, and it like totally knocked me back. I was like, holy shit, we still call it the group hug? Uh, so I have to assume that somewhere in Facebook code, somewhere this thing is actually a component called group hug, uh, which, is, which is cool. Um, the second thing I'm most proud of during my short time on groups is that you know, five years later, the header image I created for the group's feedback group is actually still there. Uh, just let the joke sink in for a second. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, fine. Um, and after six months, uh, my manager asked if I'd be interested in uh, moving over to the search team. Uh, they were working on an ambitious new approach to search. Uh, a particularly opinionated eng director had already burned through a couple of designers that tried to make progress on this, on this product. Uh, and they needed someone to, to step in and, and help the team get unstuck. Um, and the vision was to really build this kind of natural language search engine so that searches like my friends who live in San Francisco or who like dancing, uh, bands my friends like, restaurants my friends have been to, would enable you to search for anything in the Facebook social graph. We called it graph search. Uh, it was ambitious and futuristic, and it was you know, at the time seen as this really critical product to the company, so, uh, so I signed up and I threw myself into the work. Uh, after a few months, I had won the trust uh, of that you know, thorny eng director, which he finally cleared some room for me to actually get some real design work done. Um, and after nine months and countless uh, Zuck reviews, we, we launched Graph Search in January of 2013. Uh, we had this huge press event. You know, Mark got up on stage and talked about it as like the third pillar of, of Facebook. Um, it got covered in you know, every major news outlet from the New York Times to Time Magazine, you know, TechCrunch and all of that stuff. And uh, it, even, it even got a mention on, on late night TV. Uh, he introduced a new feature called Graph Search. Graph Search delivers search results that are more customized by incorporating information from your network of Facebook friends. So you can ask questions like, who are my friends that live in San Francisco? And it will answer, which by the way, if you have to ask that, you don't have any friends in San Francisco. Still true. Um, you know, and with all this attention and excitement, uh, you know, I, I felt like I was kind of like riding this cloud, right? It, it felt like this was the high point of my career. Um, and, you know, little did I know that the lowest was actually only a few months away. Uh, we had this huge backlog of work to do, and so growing the team became a huge necessity and priority. And my manager came to me one day, and he popped the question. Do you want to manage? Now, if you're anything like me, you go through six stages when someone asks you this question. The first stage is excitement. Oh my god, I'm doing great. They believe in me. This is amazing. And then FOMO sets in. If I say no, does that mean they're never going to ask me again? And then panic comes next. If I'm not the manager, someone else is going to be the manager, which leads to indignation. I can't take orders from somebody else, which leads to acceptance. Of course I'll do it. And finally, bargaining. I'll still get to design, right? Now, you know, many of you who are, uh, who are a little further along in your careers may have already faced this question. Uh, and the rest undoubtedly will someday, maybe even sooner than you think. Um, and when you're faced with this question, I really, if you take anything away from this, uh, from my, my talk tonight, uh, I want you to remember this. Many companies make the move uh, to management out to be a promotion. It is not a promotion. It is an entirely different job. 
don't let the name fool you. The day-to-day -day activities of being a design manager actually more closely resemble that of a football coach than they do a designer. Of course, I didn't know this when they asked me this question, so I said yes, mostly out of the assumption that this was my only opportunity or my only path to leadership at Facebook. And my job changed overnight, but you know, I had no idea. Uh, I wasn't prepared, and the first year, you know, honestly, nearly broke me. Uh, the first designer I hired on the team was this guy named Colin Dunn, uh, super talented, really opinionated designer. You know, in fact, his opinions uh, were so strong, we actually created a page for him called Colin Strong Opinions. Uh, these are actual quotes. They get better. Can everybody read this? I'll just read it out to the people in the back. The first one was, anyone with a case on their phone is just, ig uh, a case on their iPhone is just ignorant. The next is, today I ordered a grande iced caramel macchiato, minus six man points. And this is my favorite. Dude, whenever I look at your work, it never has any of my ideas in it. Just really good. There's so many more, too. It's so hard to pick three. Um, you know, when, when we started, I was really uncomfortable with the idea of there being any kind of power dynamic between me and Colin. And I, I remember sitting down with him in my first week as a manager. He had been on the, week, uh, on, on the team uh, maybe three or four weeks. Um, and I told him I didn't want him to think of me as a manager. I told him I wanted him to think of me as his designer partner on the team. And so there I was, starting my career as a manager, pretending that I wasn't one. And for months, you know, the extent of our relationship, I actually went back and looked at our messenger thread. Everything we talked about was about the product and the product decisions we were making, and that was it. That was the extent. I wasn't helping to guide his career, coaching him on critical skills. I wasn't creating cover for him or helping him structure his work. I didn't even know I was supposed to be doing those things. But I kept my head down, I focused on my own work, and I kind of hoped that everything would just kind of work out. Uh, but problems were, were you know, beginning to surface. By October, we were four designers. Uh, and as the team continued to grow, these problems only multiplied. Uh, I had assumed eliminating that like power dynamic between me and my team would, would actually lead to better team culture and team morale. But with no one actually empowered to make hard calls on the work that we were doing, uh, or to structure the work across the team, you know, disagreements popped up frequently and rarely got resolved. The work stalled and my team you know, had a lot of trouble getting anything shipped uh, during this time. A uh, quick poll, I can, I can kind of see all the way back there. Uh, raise your hand if you're an introvert. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's actually a trick. The introverts didn't raise their hands. Um, <laughs> such a stupid joke, sorry. Uh, uh, you know, as an introvert myself, uh, being, being a new manager was especially exhausting. There was a constant tension, you know, between my instincts, avoid talking to people, and my job requirements, talk to people all day. And I discovered being an introverted manager is a little bit like being a baker with a gluten allergy. You can kind of make it work, but it definitely doesn't make a hard job any easier. Um, you know, I, I really loved having hard product conversations, but when it came to having hard uh, interpersonal conversations and, and about conflict and disappointment and frustration for the people on my team, uh, I, I found that I retreated instead. I didn't engage. And that meant that there was uh, no way for the team to release the tension that was building up. And so once productive relationships between designers, between designers and engineers, designers and PMs, uh, it, it turned sour and, uh, and people started burning out. So by December, most of everyone was kind of at their limit. Uh, I was definitely drowning. Uh, and to top it off, graph search was actually kind of failing. Uh, usage was low, and, and even Mark publicly admitted it would be generous to suggest it worked even half the time. There were websites and memes that sprang up uh, around the more controversial things that enabled people to search for. This one is current employers of people who like racism. Yep. Um, you know, people talk about imposter syndrome. This was an imposter, imposter syndrome. Uh, the thing I had been most proud of in my career was now this kind of laughable meme. I was embarrassed, I was super depressed, and that December, just months after feeling like I was at this high point of my career, I was definitely at the lowest. Uh, I went home for the holidays that December, knowing that I had a decision to make one way or the other. Either I was gonna like slink quietly away from Facebook, quit my job, set up shop in Nebraska, 
uh, or I was going to have to admit that I was failing here and that I needed help. And you know, my guess is that everyone in this room has faced a, a somewhat similar situation, maybe, maybe not as extreme. But whether you're going through imposter syndrome or real failure, you know, the last thing you want to do is call more attention to it, to turn your kind of private insecurities into public embarrassment. And the hardest thing about asking for help is admitting to ourselves and to everyone else that we're just works in progress, that we don't know everything all the time. After unplugging for a week or two, I made a decision. I came back, had a hard conversation with my manager. I sent an email out to all the design directors at Facebook asking for help. Every single one of them jumped on the opportunity to help. They met with me regularly for months afterwards. They gave me advice. They asked me hard questions. They checked in on me regularly. I got connected with a management and leadership coach through Facebook who, who helped me better understand my strengths and how to, I could actually apply them in my new role as a manager. And most importantly, my coach actually helped me spot along the way places where I was growing, that I was actually capable of growing in this new role. She helped me kind of rebuild my confidence brick by brick. And it continued to be hard, but you know, with this tailwind of support, I and my team actually managed to kind of climb out of that hole uh, after about a year. And I finally felt confident to, uh, enough to, to continue uh, relatively on my own. Um, you know, our goal has always been to, to unlock the value of the connections and content on Facebook through search. So we've steadily made more and more of the content on Facebook searchable. Our incredible team has been slowly, carefully, quietly evolving the way that search works to make it simpler to access everything on the network. And we now handle billions of searches a day. And in December, we shipped a dramatically simplified search product. It's actually a little different than this one. We didn't have as uh, well put together a video of this yet. Um, but you know, I, like hopefully you didn't even notice the transition we, we just went through in the product. Our goal is really to unlock all of this power in a way that you don't even have to think about, that you won't even notice. It'll just feel intuitive. It'll feel right. You know, and there, there are still days when, uh, when I definitely don't feel great at my job, when I know I'm not great at my job. But, when I, but I learn something from every one of them. And when I think about it, I find myself totally shocked by the confidence that others have placed in me knowing that I'm a work in progress. And I'm incredibly lucky to have had the opportunity to build and, and coach the team that, that ultimately is delivering this, this amazing product to people. To build the thing, the team that builds the thing, right? That's what being a manager really means. You're not the boss, you're the coach. You hire and train the right team, you give them some process, autonomy, responsibility, recognition for building the right things. You have hard conversations, you rush in to help when they need a hand. And when they ask about being a manager, you definitely make damn well sure they understand what that actually means. Thanks. <laughs>